come together making millions. Get the motor ready for the bike night race. Frag about my bike and put some dollars in your face. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the Beacon Podcast. <laughs> We got Mike over there, the youngin. He's going to be representing the, the baby generation, the pussy generation, Generation Z. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, we got Danny Delo. He's a millennial. He's the one who raised the pussies. And then a millennial. <laughs> we got <laughs> slow that roll. Generation X, man. Today we're going to be talking about the big difference <laughs> between generations and how they think. Now I got to give it out to Mike, man. He really, uh, you know, don't think like them. So, but no. he has the, you know, the honor of representing them. Yeah, no, it's gonna be fun uh, talking about these people. Poor kid. Yeah, no, my generation, I guess. I'm, I'm there, a uh, millennial and a Gen Z, I guess. I'm 95, so I still represent millennials, but I understand for the show sake You're i am a Gen Z. the babies <laughs> yep i'm the what baby. actually is the do it does anybody know the birth dates of each generation do you got that china gen yeah. x is 79 till you only know the start date generation yeah, only know the start like, date. Uh, uh, generation x is 1960 is 1965 to 1980 65 to 80 is uh generation x Millennials is 81 to 96, and Generation Z is 97 to 2012. What do you fall in, Mike? I'm He's just by two. By two, I'm still a millennial. I'm okay. 95. It goes to I'm 97. Gen X. Fuckers. Gen, Gen X. Call me a goddamn millennial. So I guess I'm the millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we can talk all shit about uh, Generation Z and not have to worry about pissing anybody off. Yeah, none of I guess are. here we go. It's only me. Wait a minute. We were worried before? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness grace. Uh, baby boomers out there in 1954. Represent. Oh, man. Representing the baby boomers, man. So we'll start off with China. What you got to give us a topic here. <laughs> I've been waiting to bang oh, on Generation Z. Generation, all day. well, you're going to be doing it because this one's going to be about how Generation Z is different and similar to millennials. <laughs> and the first thing they like to discuss is technology. Well, you got to admit, uh, Danny, our generation grew up, you know, the best video games we had was Donkey Kong on Atari. We didn't even have uh, computers. We actually learned on, uh, remember, typewriting class and all that shit? Yep. Oh, yeah. But they, you know, we we came out of, I think, the best decades. But uh, what do you think about what she says about them are more into technology than uh, we were? Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, you could see them standing next to each other and they're talking on their phones to each other. Like. Like, if you call them, they'll never, they're the type of people that when you call them, they never answer, but then they text you right back. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Damn. You can't have a conversation. You can't talk in person. Like, really? I think, I think my generation, because I'm right at the tip, I mean, well, well, right at the end of Gen X. Um, I think my generation, you know, we grew up with both, the best of both worlds. We grew up old school, but we got to see all the video games and the computers and the internet. We 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 lived through that. We saw all of that generate and come together, you know. Yeah. So, so we, you're the we, excuse we got the best we're messed up. You're the What's excuse. That? You're the excuse that we're messed up. You know what I mean? Gen Z's all messed up, right? You're the excuse. Well, it is. You know what? You got it right, man. We didn't whoop your asses enough. That's yeah. Right. It's true. Well, it's, it was a the, soft, the problem is, is soft, that our generation serve. allowed the government to get involved in our lives to the point where we couldn't discipline our children. So now we have these little weak minded, following, bambling idiots that walk around not knowing shit and, and they've never gotten their ass whooped and it shows. Case in point. Over the, over the last, what, month and a half, guys, I've been building my bike, right? And I had a powder coater. 
Um, told me his name was Luke. Turns out his name is Bo. This guy owes everybody in the Walworth County, Wisconsin area, and then some. Rock County, everywhere. He owes everybody money, right? He goes around scamming people. He's actually been on the news for scamming uh, the elderly for roofing jobs. Damn. This guy took one look at me getting out of my vehicle. Now, Hollywood and China, you both seen me personally up front in person. Do I really, I mean, you know, and I'm not trying to be a badass or nothing. You guys know me. But do I look like a person that you're going to be able to scam and get away with? Absolutely no. not. But this guy no. looked at me and said. He answered that right away. <laughs> oh, I'll let you answer that. Go ahead. No, nah, man, you carry yourself good. And I, you know what? It's funny how uh, you just said that he's been scamming the elderly and stuff. And I'm sitting yeah. here wondering how the hell did that, you know, they let him do that. But go ahead. But, you know, case in point, this guy took a look at me and didn't, you know, he didn't think, hey, this guy's got my father's address. He's got my address. He, he, he's got my phone number. This guy can do bad things to me. He didn't think that at all. Because he's never had his ass whooped. And that's the problem with the newer generation. They've never had their ass handed to them. So they don't know, they don't understand how guys like me and Hollywood work. Well, even Mike, too. You know, they don't understand that if you run your mouth, if you say the wrong thing, if you disrespect us, we will smack you in the, in the mouth. We'll smack you in the head. You know, they don't understand that. So that's that's what we're stuck with. We didn't get to beat them up when they were kids. Well, that's the true. difference the difference is the technology, I think, in the ass whoop and in the sense of at least being out in public. I mean, every time someone goes to take a swing on someone, someone's recording it with their phone right there. So it's handed straight to the cops and their face is right there, right? You know, so at this point <clears throat> at this point, what what benefit is there? to actually going out there and causing any sort of beef or anything like that. Why would you get and put yourself into that circumstance? Why? I don't know. They sure to hell do it a lot, man. You see, but everyone's on, got phones. It's not just us. Yeah. Everyone's got the phone. So everyone's well, that's what I mean. You got a bunch of high school kids out in Cali that, uh, you know, messed up a Marine or two Marines. And it's like, they have no remorse whatsoever, uh, with what they do in, uh, China. Yeah. How is our uh, style of raising kids compared to millennials? <laughs> well, it only took one ass whooping on each kid to straighten them up, and they never <laughs> screwed up again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't think the younger generation's getting enough of that. Well, because everybody's afraid. Because why? Because the kids threaten to call the cops. The kids <laughs> threaten to videotape facts, yep. it. That part and, right there too. Uh, They'll bust their phones out and be like, go ahead, go ahead. I'll just record it. Well, you're yep. going to record something. Let me tell you what. So basically, Mike, uh, our generation got scared of the government. Yeah, of course. They're looking down at us going, you know, like they're looking at any ammunition at any moment to get us. So why would you give it to them? And, and at that point with technology, we're just handing it to them on a platter. Just here. You don't even have to investigate me here. Here's everything on me. You know, and, and I'm guilty of that, too. I mean, I put my life out there, too, you know, mm -hmm. so but it's kind of wild what predicaments we put ourselves in with technology, especially. But really, is it all technology, Danny? That's uh, the difference uh, between the generations. No, um, I mean, it's a multitude of things. I think, you know, it's movies, it's music, it's um, man, it, it's so much, you know, I mean. The video games are so real now that these people really think that modern warfare games and stuff like that, they really think that they can do that in real life because they played the video game, you know, and, and they have no remorse and they have no feelings because it's been, it's been just, you know, between movies, music and video games. It's just been savage shit, man. You know, you know and, and you know what's funny is the US military actually tells these kids that uh 
you know, if you're good at video games or something, you can be a drone pilot or uh, something like that. That's pretty mm-hmm. bad with the government getting that way. Well, that's just recruiting methods, I think. <laughs> yeah, you well, can be a drone pilot. Ah, never mind. You're stupid, but we'll go ahead and throw you in the front line. <laughs> <laughs> how do we look at life different china how does generation x look at life well one of the main things that i always look at like generation x we're like very into like our like milestones like buying a house getting married uh having the 2.5 kids and the dog mm. you know and it's like you look at the like generation so basically what the boomers taught us yeah and then you look down to like the gen z's and they don't care about having their own house they'll live at home they don't care they'll live with no the parents shit. <laughs> they don't worry about a lot of, and i'm not saying all you know because there's there's exceptions <laughs> But they don't worry about getting married because they're too busy breaking up over text. I think that's actually the smart. <laughs> I think that's a smart way of going, Mike. You know, not get married. You know, you want to lease it and not own it. But that's just me. Well, at this point, name me an honest, an actual valid reason why <laughs> what benefit men get from marrying. What benefit do men get nowadays? It shouldn't be about benefit, though, Mike. There is no be benefit, that, though. You, you there love is, that person. There's only a, a, a possible loss. There's not a possible gain. Well, lo- if you go into anything you're uh, with that kind of attitude, you're, you're going to come saying, up with the I'm same saying, solution, at, I think. I'm just saying look objectively. No, I, I know where you're going. I yep. mean, I, I've, I've watched the videos and stuff, too. I, I know exactly what you mean. But I don't think you should go into marriage looking like... What am I going to get out of it? I mean, yeah, that's, but that, that's not the what thing. marriage is, is was ever I'm, about. I'm, that's the whole thing is I'm still getting married, but not by the state. Right. That's just personal. That's a personal thing with me. Now, anybody else? Uh, I want to hear, want hear Danny's argument on this yeah, one. I do want to hear it. <laughs> then I want to hear more. <laughs> I can't help it, but I mean, that, that train of thought to say, well, you know, what am I gaining by marrying you? You don't give a shit about that person if that's the way you truly think. Mm-mm. You know, I mean, you care about somebody and you want to marry them. That wasn't that the whole point of marrying somebody is because you love them and you you want to spend the rest of your life with them and and build a future with them and spend life with them. I mean, it's not if about who's really gaining wants, something. If she really wants you that like that, then it'll be vice versa, and she'll keep the state out of it. Go ahead, Mike. I want, to hear, I want to hear your thoughts from uh, Danny. Go ahead, Mike. Me, I was saying that just keep the state out of it completely. Keep the keep the paper. Go to go do your church thing. Go do your thing. You can still get married without filing. You know what I mean? You can still do all that. That's what I plan on doing. I plan on keeping the government out of my life. So as, you're not legally going to be married now. Correct. So I'm not legally going to be married. Okay. You're so you're not married. getting married. I'm so not getting married, but I am married. No, you're not. So we're going to be. See how it, how it can be confused. I, I, I see what you mean, because I I, I kind of sort of okay understand like the paperwork argument. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, I don't know, man. You're gonna be moving to a common law type of deal. Uh, go ahead, China. You're gonna say something. <laughs> you know, he asked what we get out of marriage. Well, I get a bitch. But go ahead. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Much love to you too there, hon. Baby, if you're listening, I didn't say that. I didn't nod my head or agree at all. Okay? All right. (laughs) Shut up, Danny. Is that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Danny's just trying to get some later That's all hey, that's about <laughs> Man, I'll get some anytime I want I am truly a blessed man Let me tell you <laughs> You know there's a common uh, theme here <laughs> Yes, honey I love you, honey <laughs> That's the common theme <laughs> Go ahead, what were you going to say? <laughs> He's paying me back for the comments backstage <laughs> Yeah, I think he is for real. Damn. But but is he right? Do we have to file what is that legal paperwork 
if, with the government, but it used to be where you went to the church and it was recognized. It is recognized at the yep. church because we got married at the church, but we still filed our marriage certificate with. The, but what Mike's the, saying, that's not the way it always was. You were married in the eyes of God. Tech, yeah. And the government was nowhere near it. Yeah. But then if you think about it the way it is now, you're technically not married. You're married. You know what? Odd, but not on paper. It's there. Why do you have to have that piece of paper from a judge? There you exactly. go. Say you're legally married. Exactly. Now you're connecting the dots. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm just like, I'm just like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> He's go. catching on. All right. No, nah, I ain't agreeing with you, dog. No. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, no. No, it's a legitimate question, I think, though. Well, it's something you can see the different generations how they look at marriage now. Mm -hmm. yeah. The younger ones are like CYA, Man, I don't need that. cover your ass kind of deal. That's but that's are they smart? You know what? I have to say, are they smarter than us then? Because there is a fifty percent and above divorce rate in this country. So are they smart by saying, "Hey, I don't want to go through that." And there's also a fifty percent or above rate of you losing all your shit <laughs> so are they stupid in the way they're thinking by saying you know what i don't want to get married no no i don't think they're stupid I, I just think the 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 thought behind not getting married like what am i gaining type of thing is is kind of goofy but Okay, then what do you, uh, what, what could you, you're not going to ever hold any leverage on any side of anything. You're, you're, you're oh, giving up everything. Perfect. You really are giving up every bit of leverage. Why do you, you need leverage? Do you, are we talking about being a lawyer or give, being no, a little no, no. person? It's, it, it, but you, that's diving deep into the topic. It really is. Let's well, they have that. Yeah, how the different what generations think, and now you think you have to have leverage on somebody else. Well, it's not about having leverage. It's just maintaining frame. That's all it is. It's understanding. Now you now. just said leverage. Uh, leverage. Back, okay, Colin. leverage. You just said leverage. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and stick with my words and bite my words on that. Um, <laughs> let's let's use that word leverage. Got him. Um, yeah, no, I try to sweep over it. Um, <laughs> no, we ain't letting that go. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, no. I'm not trying to insinuate that we're trying to have anything better or we're anything better than anybody. We're not, but you have to have some sort of guidance with it. Uh, like a, a woman needs guidance in every aspect of life. It pretty much is that way. You, I mean, I want you to come to me as a ball of clay, dude. I want to be able to clay you <laughs> up the way I don't want a ready made bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want that. I, I want I want you come in clay so that I mold you the exact way. Anyway, so we're hiring for somebody to be on the podcast. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Face. Danny, <laughs> your face right so now. Anyways, I went with it. You there, gotta, you, no, there you go. You know Hold on a second. You got to reply to being a uh, uh, you know a ball <laughs> of clay there, trying to know. Dude, screw you, man. What the hell's wrong with you? Ain't nobody yeah, gonna. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to mold me the way they want me. I'm going to be me. And if you don't like it, screw yep, off. They're, they're, they're trying to tell them. Uh, I knew it was going to happen. Oh, That's that old I school my, woman right tongue. there. No. I, I bit my tongue on that one and took it. So it is what it is. Yeah, I still fought better, for it. You better bite harder, dude. I, st I still tried. I still tried. Yeah, backpedaling. It the Bent Rim Podcast has a very valid point here. Since since we've oh, just totally podcast. moved the subject over. <laughs> Right. I mean, financially looking at it, in some cases, it's better to let female file as single mother to allow chances of increased tax return. So marriage in some thoughts kind of is a deterrent. Did, that's that's yeah. true. It's like they don't reward you. They reward you for being single, but like penalize you for being together. Yeah. It does kind of work that way. Yeah, so we does. see uh, Generation uh, Z's uh, outlook on marriage, where more, we're more traditional, I guess. If kids are involved, too, is a big play, too. You know, having stepkids and all of that, that's also always a play. 
Oh, I'm you know? getting a kick out of these comments. They're ripping. Is that like an anchor <laughs> on the marriage, then, Mike? You know, stepchildren and stuff. Since you know, I mean, you can't mold a kid, can you? Yeah, no, I, I was molded. It's okay. I was molded by my father. Okay, well, how's generations? We need to get Dad on the phone right now. Yeah, get him on. He'll call on the show. <laughs> he's he's a big troll What's too. His, he just you know what? Put his number in the back room, and I'll call him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to We're talk to him Papa personally. Ghosting. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to talk yeah, to see, him he's personally. He's backtracking now. Uh. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want us calling Dad? <laughs> yeah, no, you're not calling my dad. Not you, Tommy <laughs> Doll. I'd rather have Hollywood do that. He will. He said, he I'd said, rather have it. Hollywood do that. Leave China Doll <laughs> out of the conversation. <laughs> he said, put it in private chat. He looks a little nervous, Hollywood. What do you think? <laughs> I think, man, he's sweating a little bit over there. I'm yes. telling you. Just as much as he is from the and, sunburn. And, and Nelson <laughs> says, I love hearing youngsters who are convinced they have life figured out. Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Pride is going to get way more bumpy as a wise man it once does. said. Wisdom and you <laughs> share no table. <laughs> so now you're, you know, I seen Sunshine in there and she used to think highly of Mike. Not now. <laughs> you lost Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, lost it. It's a tragedy, isn't it? <laughs> Rattlesnake says, "What in the world? What in the wide world of sports did I just basically oh, yeah. a rattlesnake is moment. going on here? We're talking about the different generations, and it looks like Deb, uh, Generation Z is losing. <laughs> it, no, not losing, but they, you know what? They kind of got the mindset of what the Vietnam generation had as far as women are concerned." <laughs> That's the way it, it, it's sounding to me. Women are only worth face value, basically, to them. Yeah, that's the so way. So basically, it's just eye candy. It ain't nothing. It's well, a trophy. You know it's a trophy. You got to win it to be in it. Sounds, sounds about like Miami and L.A. Well, he has a Holly, Hollywoodism right there. Uh, <laughs> what other differences do we have here, Gina? Oh, man. Uh, Mike. <laughs> He's a different. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here representing a lot here, okay? I know I'm, taking, that. I'm taking one for the team. This is rough. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, John. All the questions come my way, so. Um, well, this would go to Danny. Go to this one. All right, well, this is one. Um, it's mental health. Uh, it says, Gen Z has a different attitude towards mental health than previous generations. These young people are increasingly concerned with erasing the stigmas that surround mental health conditions. Well, they got mental health conditions because they're freaking crazy anyway. Yeah, I mean, this you know what? The problem is when it comes to mental health, that's Generation X's fault. Because we pass down, uh, you know, the weakness by not spanking the hell out of them. Mm -hmm. And then they passed it down to Generation Z. So if they stub their toe, they think they need Prozac. <laughs> Damn. Bro. <laughs> wow. That's cool. what it comes from. <laughs> wow. That is the best way I've ever heard it put that in my was? entire life. That was. I gotta give you. A I stuck my toe. I need Prozac. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, but that was. Funny. That's how I ended up with a foot fetish. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Prozac. <laughs> but did Danny? I, I think read... one of the things, like when it comes to mental health, I think our generation, um, doesn't quite grasp the mental health problems that are today, and I speak from straight up experience of myself, like. You know, years ago, I mean, what was anxiety and depression and all that? You know, we didn't know anything about that, and we thought it was all bullshit. It's like, ah, you're having a bad day, dude. Get over it and suck it up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 now look at us. Look at me in Hollywood. We were the two people that guaranteed I already know he was talking shit, and so was I, about people with depression and anxiety. Like, ah, get over it. Grow up. Quit being a puss. And now look at us, you know. Uh, we're, we're getting thrown into panic attacks watch, watching the wrong freaking movie. You know? I, so well, That's because we were taught uh, by the baby boomers because they were in a state where uh, they were, they used to drink their problems away and yeah. they would hide it, keep it to themselves, and they passed that to us. Yeah. 
And it wasn't until I got in my 30s, man, that I recognized what the hell anxiety was. Um, uh, you know, and you're right because what you just said, China Dow was say, saying to me. What? When Which I was having not, anxiety and panic. It's all in your head until well, I had one. And then yeah, that was it, all. No, no. My dad didn't experience one bit of panic or depression until, the, like, he told me the day he hit 40. When he hit 40, we were in Mammoth Mountain and we ruined the entire trip because he had a whole panic attack, which we didn't know. He didn't know what was going on. So we rushed him down the mountain and everything. Did and he stub his toe? And totally stubbed his toe. You know, it was a panic attack. <laughs> it was it was a Prozac moment. <laughs> so, or, yeah. like Sun, or like Sunshine just said, oh, no, they stubbed their toes. They need a freaking GoFundMe account for it. Hey, oh, my too. God. Don't get me started on that, that Sunshine. That, I'm that, so sick of that shit. That stuff right there, Ugh. they have bad karma coming their way. People that steal money like that. that they do? That stuff that... Hell yeah, the people make up you know false claims of fa fake uh, diseases and fake all Dude, sorts of Dude, there's a stuff. restaurant near me Dude, that had a fire. Now, mind you, this whole joint didn't burn down. Like, they just had a kitchen fire. They got a remodel, right? And somebody started a GoFundMe for the burger joint. And I'm like, uh, did they give us free burgers when we used to come there? No. Then why am I going to give anything to the GoFundMe? Well, it's what, what insurance is for? Insurance? Yeah, like insurance. everything is, you know. Oh, you know, somebody's somebody's got to go to the hospital, or somebody's doing this. You know, let's start a GoFundMe, and not one of my friends yet has started a GoFundMe for me to get a new Harley. The motherfuckers. Uh, um, <laughs> I broke a nail the other day, so I need to. I'm gonna start one up when we get off so the podcast. Basically, right, so right. basically, Generation Z knows how to use technology to make that money. Yeah, but there are a lot of them are doing it the wrong way, and that. Okay, wait a second here. Is, What's the wrong way if you got to hustle? Go, the GoFundMe shit. They're lying to get money from people that probably can't afford to donate it, and you got to like check, fact check to find out if the go, the, GoFundMe that, accounts are even real. That's why I don't even. Well, that's no it. different than our government, but we still pay taxes. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but about it. you know, can't get around that. Unfortunately. One's private, one's not. I so. Guess. With Generation X, if we were criminals, it was more on the street. Now, yeah. with Generation Z, you guys are able to, like you were just talking about this GoFundMe thing, use technology without even putting yourselves out there. You know, some cyberbully stuff, cyberbully attack. You Dude, know, they're people, idiots people with, can the, mask with the phones them. and everything, man. They are, they are dumb. But there, are... there was these two brothers in Chicago. And there were gangbangers. And these idiots recorded themselves driving all around the hood, shooting at people. Like, recorded themselves. Like, dude, you just, you might as well just go turn yourself in. And now they're both doing life in the joint, I believe, for killing yeah, somebody right. on camera. Yeah, probably like Facebook Live. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, what are you guys doing? You guys, are idiots, man. <laughs> so why do you why do you Generation Zers depend on technology so much? Mm, I don't know if it's probably a lack of ambition. They weren't really taught much to to like go and bust your ass. Like, hey, there's consequences for not paying rent. Hey, there's mm -hmm. consequences for not you know paying your bills. There's there's consequences for this shit. You can't just get away with it. And um, I I do think a lot of our Gen Z was soft served you know uh you're right on the fact that i don't agree that you should take your day out on your kid or nothing but once in a while let them know that you, hey you're, you're the person to listen to in the house you know don't don't talk back like that then yeah it's understandable but people got to get all crazy left or all crazy right on every decision you know it's got to get radical on everything and i think gen z has done a fantastic job at radicalizing everything Okay, here's something that is going to get a little probably under some people's skin, but I'm going to say it and I don't All care. Right, let's do it. You're ready? Okay. Generation X, when we were growing up, you didn't hear about gays, lesbians, transgenders, LGBTQ plus ABC. Well, yeah, you kept that stuff in the closet around us. So do we blame millennials or do we blame the Gen Zers? No, we don't blame any of them. We blame the, <laughs> the mainstream media and the ones that pay them 
all these rich pricks uh-huh. who want to, you know, decay our morality. That's what they're doing. And why do we always have to, on every form we ever fill out, put male or female? Why? I've uh, always have, asked that question. Federal statistic. But I'm so ser- when you ser- do an application, if you can't not legally hire me based on my background, my ethnic, or religion, then why are you asking me about those three things? Hmm. Why is you know every fill out say sex? What what national like whether you're white, black, green, purple? For sex, I always just put sure right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay you know what let but me argue no, no no let me argue with you here for a second let me argue with you here oh shit here we go yeah here mom go. and dad gonna fight let's gaslight this shit mike <laughs> my whole family were coal miners yeah and you asked why would they ask about male or female yeah and you asked about what i called you in the green room <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about now? <laughs> but you think a a a, a, a coal company is going to want to hi- hire a woman to go into them coal mines? But you can look at the person back then. I'm not talking now. I'm talking back then. Well, Gen Z can't even freaking determine what a male and female is. So yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Generation but you, uh, you know, your question with... was why, why do you why? have to answer? Because some women can't do a man's job. But what if the woman is qualified to be a coal miner? They'll never put her under there. But I'm just saying, a woman can do a man's job. Some. A lot. No. There's some. things that women can't do, and there's things that men can't do. That's the way I look at it. Like me, I can't have a baby. Even what, I hope not. Whatever you know, what even though what Generation Z says, I don't know, you I look like your doodle. I'm telling you, you too, there, Munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking oompa loompa, you. <laughs> He's in all blue. Let's call him Smurf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Papa Fat Smurf. Do you agree, Mike, that women can't do some stuff men can? Yes. Of course, Maybe. he's going to oh, agree. He thinks women ain't well, shit. Well, no, he, I don't think he that. He wants to mold her. It's fine. Well, what, <laughs> no, well, well, let's talk about it for real. Women did not build the infrastructure of the world. I mean, who builds that? The men do. You know, uh, the things that, that women and all of us get to enjoy, it was built by it was also a thousand years ago, and women didn't have any rights either. No, no, the infrastructure that we're talking about today. So women, Mike, women, you're saying women had nothing to do with building it today. Danny, the, and, uh, the main infrastructure I, of I, all of today, it's I'm basically to already all built. In a minute. All there is to do is do like little blueprints and stuff. Like they do that from an office now. That's different. Women can two pee standing up, William. Damn it! That's why they have these little pee cups now. <laughs> Shut oh up. yeah, there is the drain, the, that drain <laughs> thing. I have seen that. What the fuck? This is strange shit. Oh, hey, easy on the language. That's some Gen Z stuff. I'm just saying. But, okay, so you're saying women can't build a company? No, they absolutely can. Okay. Um, Well, I can already, I mean, y'all know my opinion on women as president. That should never happen. But anybody would be better than Diaperhead. Um, I do agree with that. Women can build, uh, they, they can, they can build buildings. There's co- female construction workers. There's female architects. There's female doctors. There's female vets. There's, I mean, come on. And none of them jobs that you just mentioned are labor intensive. A construction worker? I'm not the one talking about the ones that hold the signs. I'm not talking about the ones that hold the signs either. <laughs> I, feel a, I feel a lawsuit coming, I swear. <laughs> I'm trying to stay out of mom and dad fighting right now. You know what I mean? It's like I'm trying to stick into my own corner over here. No, Mike, you know what? You're more, you're thinking. No, no, don't throw it on me. Don't throw this shit on me. Uh Uh-uh. Next. You're thinking is what, you know, the old Vietnam guys taught me where she's talking about this Gen Z crap. 
maybe we're skipping generations and stuff. Maybe the thinking of generations have just skipped. I don't know. I I don't know how to. You're the first person that's ever said that. Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> Berkshire family videos. He's trying to change the subject. No, Keep let's going. let's say it this way. Here we, here we go with Crazy Joe, the expert we have here. Oh, men Jesus. have physical strength that women <laughs> don't. That is fact. A strong woman cannot overpower a strong man. I think he's right on that because look at I the women. Know, man. I know some broads out of whoop our ass. So look at the I women. Know, no. they're, all, they're all pissed off because there's men in freaking women's sports. Oh, but take it was the, okay take, for them to get in our the, sports, right? Take the worst, like, men, male boxer, professional, I guess, and then take the like Ronda Rousey or, or something like that, that Ronda's going to get rocked. I truly believe that. By a professional fighter that's actually labeled as a professional, going to get rocked. Ooh, who so will? Ronda would get rocked. Well, she already so, got rocked. That's why she's a WWE. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, well, I'm just saying. That's an So basically, right. the way that you're thinking now, China, is started with generation z or x and we passed it down yeah i mean there's so much out there that women can do that men can do but women don't get the credit like a man would danny like what well like running their own company starting a company from the ground up and like okay like there was an example in in the chat uh, Mary Kay Cosmetics was flipping huge. That was a woman. Right. And the, you see them driving in their pink Cadillacs. Because, well, I'm talking no, because before our so let, me, let me ask you this then, China. Yes. You said that women can build a company and they don't get the credit, which I, I agree with you 100%. But why does a woman need the credit? It's not so Us much men don't get credit for building a company. We no, just think, build a company. I think men get more credit and more. Uh, and I believe we, at a boys than you hear at a girl. I believe women should because the way to the top of the tower and the ladder uh -huh. is on their, knee, on their knees. <laughs> so you should get credit. I believe in that. Dude, you sleeping <laughs> in a damn garage tonight. That is all I'm saying. I don't know. You might be calling me after the show. Hey, bro, can I come visit you? Dang. <laughs> For real, there you're lucky. There's a hide bed in the couch. You better go join your bikes. See go you ahead, at Mike. The CH tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'll be at the clubhouse all night tonight. Uh, Bye, Felicia. Why? But let's these... get back our generational thing here. What? Oh, you want uh, our top? I was you just gonna read. I was just gonna read a random uh, comment that we got here. Why are feminazi yeah you know, all obsessed? Uh, have blue hair and unfuckable yet demand respect for what? Yeah, I mean, Ooh. demand and respect I agree for with what? That. Like, but you, I don't want, know. I... you want everything better than you. Like, you never want anything that's you or below, but you want everything that's better than you, but you think you deserve it. That's the worst part about it, is you think right. you deserve it. That's the So hard basically, part. Uh, Generation Z is the generation who says, you got to acknowledge me. Where mm, older yeah. generations, we really yes. care. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Okay, okay. I mean, they think their feelings really matter in this world. They really do. I mean, they think, you know, well, you know, I, I, I'm identifying, shut up. I don't mm -hmm. care what you're identifying as. I'm just going to call you stupid because you're stupid. You and your pronouns. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And Nelson made a comment that I'm kind of like, I don't know where to go with it. Uh, women do not belong in ground combat units as a matter of course. Wrong saw, it, saw it firsthand with the lioness and the female <clears throat> engagement teams. I don't know, man. Uh, no, don't some, know of them, that the, some of them Arab women, they'd whoop your ass just <laughs> better than that. <laughs> they over there killing men and stuff like that. Cut. I ain't gonna, this ain't that else. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next one on the list what's the next one on the list wow um i think women if they want to be in on ground combat they can do whatever they want 
okay, they can do anything they want, but what if they get captured? Then that's their fault. They screwed up. Yeah, but... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> She's willing to give it... No consequences. But look what happens. Look what happens if you got caught, Jessica Lynch. Oh, and look how many men have gotten held captives. Hello? Yeah, but you don't have the Vietnam slant eyes freaking in behind them <laughs> giving it up to, you know, the wazoo. Men don't do that there. Oh, I'm going to take you prisoner. I'm going to give it up the wazoo. No, you women get captured. Guess what's happening, man? You're getting tag team for freaking 24 hours a day. Hell yeah. I mean, that, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why you shouldn't be in combat. Well, I think oh. they should be at combat, but doing a different job. Oh. Yeah, you know what? The Japanese, the Vietnamese did that where they used the women at the pleasure houses for the Japanese and the Vietnamese soldiers. <clears throat> I'd imagine being a woman in, in the service nowadays has got to be pretty, pretty rough. He comes out with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, think about it. They go through the same training. They go through everything just like a guy would, but mm -hmm. then they get looked at like they ain't shit because they're a woman. That's got to kind of suck. If they can make it through boot camp just like a man can, why can't they do what they're but supposed they're not, to But they're not no. freaking held to the same standards in boot camp. How do you know? Because when you freaking got, okay, push they up. They go through the same boot camp everybody else does, man. Yeah, but their physical the, the standards. Checklist, their checklist is a little different, but yeah. Are you sure they, about that? I'm yeah, they get damn sure, yeah. The There's actually been story leads. There's been story leads on the people getting accepted in because they were women and didn't actually fit certain dynamics of the spreadsheet or whatever, of the uh, physical sheet. They didn't pass, but they still let them in. So there has uh, been there has been that. That's why there's no women Navy SEALs. But uh, go ahead with the next comment. <laughs> damn. I'm going to get oh. your ass tomorrow, China, though. Um, uh, morals. Ooh, Gen, Gen Zers one. tend to think that what's what's right is what doesn't hurt anyone. Why do you think that is? Well, who gets to define what's right? Well, I'm just saying their morals are different than other people's morals. They basically think what's right for them as long as they're not hurting anyone, they don't care. <laughs> I Ooh, Annie, get in that one. Oh no, I'm starting to think maybe I'm Gen Z. <laughs> it's it's convincing, huh? <laughs> it fits me, yeah. and it ain't hurting none of y'all. Uh, yeah, right. Berserker, I'll, I'll Berserker, Berserker came the Hollywood's uh, thing here. Yes, as a Marine, I can testify that women have different standards. Really? That's so. Uh, if you want to be equal to men, that's something. And well, then maybe the military should change their standards, and they should have them be the same standards as a man. But then, then there'd be no women in the military and, you, and the women would cry but, about that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just this. saying too. I'm not it saying was, it directed at you. So Mike, what she, Mike, <laughs> I mean, women can serve too. You know, what Mike, I mean? what she's saying here is <laughs> that the generation thinks it, as long as it don't hurt anybody, it's all right. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, is that why we're seeing dudes that go into a women's bathroom stand peeing up and get all weird? standing up? What yeah. is standing pee up? <laughs> well, they, yeah, they're pissing, sitting down. In the women's I, bathroom, when men go in there and they're dressed as women, they sit. They don't stand. <laughs> anyway, and you guys think, hey, it's all right. Nobody's hurting. They're not hurting anybody. Yeah, uh, again... No, uh, that's that's different. That it, is hurting people. Yeah, that part that, that part is but hurting not according people. to them, if you look at all well, the... Right, and, and, right. Uh, and that's that's the part that they're thinking that it's infringing on other people's rights, and that's what they're fighting for. And I think it's all about their rights. As long as they have the right to do it, then that's cool. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean they necessarily want to do it, whatever it is. It could be on okay, war. Okay, what's with your generation letting people, you know, the small minority mm -hmm. 
less than 0.5% of the population push that stuff on the us. Well, that's the thing is it's not that 0. 0.5 point, you know, whatever uh, percentage it's of the your population. Generation. It's our people doing it. It's our, like, it's the, it's really the white Caucasian man that, that is out there protesting and doing all that civil stuff for everybody. You know, it's not just for women's rights or gay rights or any type of rights. It's all types of human rights that these people are willing to go and fight for. It's weird. It is it weird. Even- can, I, can you know what? I've been dying to ask a Generation Z or this question. Uh, <laughs> look, look at Danny. This is going to get good. <laughs> <laughs> what what is, what is your definition of fascism? I don't have one. Honestly, I don't even really know the definition. Your generation, anybody they don't agree with, will call people fascists. I, I, that, that whole fascist, like it has been overused by probably our generation. It's just, it's a, the whole thing has been overused. Again, Gen Z likes to radicalize everything. That's, that's honestly how I see it from my side of the post. It looks like everyone's radicalized and everything. It's hard to be just have a like a, a straight and narrow point of view. You can't have that. You got to be either here or here. And it's hard not to. Let me read the, the definition here and see if they're using fascism right and why they look like idiots. A mass political movement that emphasizes extreme nationalism militarism and the supremacy of both nation and the single powerful leader over the individual. That don't sound like uh, the way they're using it. No, it definitely isn't. And that's, that's the first time I actually hearing the full definition of fascism. You know, that's pretty interesting because it's mm. all, it's overused by our generation, my generation. And actually a lot. then they throw in Hitler and Hitler wasn't a fascist. That was Mussolini. Yeah, they don't even have their shit straight. See how, so, see how stupid your generation is? Yeah, hey, <laughs> it's it's a lack of it's lackluster and and if it doesn't pertain to maybe them, uh, I guess I kind of contradict myself on here a little bit because they will fight for their own right, fight for other people's rights, but then on the other hand, get extremely offended on this other shit. So it's kind of weird. It like I said, it's extreme left or right, you know, on both sides. So I laugh at that very insinuation. They fight for their rights. I, I, last time I checked, standing there with a freaking sign in your hand right. wasn't fighting. Right, that that phrase itself. I know exactly what you mean. Right. I know. But what rights do they have to fight for that they already have? Exactly. That's something that I agree with personally, but objectively mm-hmm. speaking, it's hard because I guess people feel like they 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 like they feel not they think or I know I'm deserved or owed something. No, I feel like I I deserve this, you know. And um, that comes from millennials that were your parents that babied you. Yeah, like I said previous in the show, that didn't you know show us any kind of consequence for other shit like that. Absolutely, because I know the other ones on the panel got their ass whooped. Yeah, and actually, uh, I got my ass whooped only a couple of times because my dad actually felt bad about doing it. And but mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't get myself into too many predicaments as a kid getting my ass whooped or nothing. But when I did, it was it was rough, and I learned from it. But um, it's not like hey. what people from my generation say. Oh yeah, it's gonna like scar you dude, for life, they, dude. They wanna, you know what I'd like to do is take a, take a generation zier back to our childhood days and then and see, see if they can with hand with handle it within that overnight yeah. jump now could you <laughs> wife could you yes. could you I handle could. the 1980 yes. no you couldn't yes no you couldn't okay you think he can handle it danny what's that you think he could have handled what we had to go through as kids i don't know i'm not gonna put like that on like that um no, his generation. I mean, oh, his generation? Hell no. I'm not I'm talking about I'm not talking about you personally, Mike. I'm talking about Yeah, gener- I know my generation. Uh, no, his generation, no. His generation would get would get chewed up and spit out. What about you, China? What do you think about how put our daughter, for example, you think she could have lived the uh, early eighties? No. No. <laughs> no. She's dumb now. 
<laughs> she's book smart, but she's dumb everywhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so mean. You better hope she's not watching because you'll be getting Love texts you. all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be ringing out about all right. it. All right. I, and the I one got... one the woman hater here isn't laughing. So <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Everybody on here kisses ass to somebody. Let me tell you, except me. Uh, anyway, hey, I got some shit. things. I got, I got a couple things that us as gen, uh, as as our generation X, and maybe some millennials might remember this, but Gen Z might have a hard time. Here are some things from our teenage years that we had to do growing up. Do you remember blowing into your video game cartridge to make it work? Yep. Uh -huh. I know my girlfriend in high school knew oh, how to blow. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I remember them days. How about cycling to your, like riding your bicycle to your friend's house because they were only kid on the block that actually had a computer and it was dial up. I was the kid. <laughs> I was I that never, kid. I never did that. <laughs> I remember riding my bike to Fullerton Avenue Beach or North Avenue Beach. Yeah, and hang that, out at the at the beach, but yeah, I, I never well. Yeah, bent rim. She's talking about blowing things all the time. <laughs> How about recording your favorite song on a tape, only to have the DJ ruin it by talking the last second? Yes. <laughs> last he'd, be, he'd have your your oh. hand on the pause button, just waiting to hit oh, the pause, and then live B ninety six shit. Damn it. Yeah. Oh my god, I haven't heard B96 in a while. <laughs> DJ Two Cool Chris. Yeah. In the mix. How was uh so Mike going from the top of the conversation, you said about marriage that you really don't care about it. How do Generation Z look at sex compared to what the older generations look like? Mm. Oh, that should be interesting. Sex. <laughs> um, I think. Do you even like it? Yeah, of course, man. Come on, stop. <laughs> Come on, man. Once, once you, once you have it, you can't stop. Um, true. that's the problem. It's so true. It's, it, 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 you never stop. It's the worst decision any of us guys ever made in our lives. Was the worst financial sex. decision ever. You know what I mean? But we totally go <laughs> for it every time. You know, it's, weird. it's really weird. But you guys are more of the shades of gray type of generation, aren't you? Where you just like being freaks. They they love being open. They love being open about their shit. Okay, but what's open mean? Very open, like meaning, I'll, like I guess where it comes from is out the closet. It, it does. I do believe that's where that term came from. Is being so basically, Generation Z don't care if they're you know if they're it, a dude. But see, I don't want I don't want I don't want, in the room. I don't want no guy <laughs> and girl making out in front of me, you know, and touching each other either in front of hey, me. This ain't you. Know, this ain't you. I'm talking about your generation. But yes, again, objectively speaking, yes, they love it out there. You don't want two there. girls in front of you making out and touching each other. I said a guy and a girl. Oh. Okay. okay, what about two girls? I'm still against it. You're what? Uh, like right, right there, like for Jennifer's like kids, in the chat. I know kids she to is. Be, <laughs> I'm talking general public. I'm not talking about like our closed events and clubhouses, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, I have a question for you guys. I have a question. What is the best piece of advice you ever received from someone not in your generation? Lisa, don't own it. <laughs> <laughs> so Gen Z gave you that or who gave you that? Because I'm confused, you know what I mean? Are we going backwards in time? <laughs> what are we doing here? Lost in translation. <laughs> Danny, what, what is the best advice somebody has ever given you that's older than you? Like, let's say maybe a baby boomer. Like a gray bear. I gotta be, I really gotta think about that. Yeah, that, that, that is a good one. Um, oh, that was a good one. The best one that I got was, I think was don't, my, don't instantly jump the gun and don't instantly react. That's what I got. I mean, obviously, I'm a firecracker, can be. And uh, you guys have seen it. You know, it happens. I'm that type of personality. So I've learned how to definitely tame that through the years. 
you know. I, I think you're just a more of your generation's more emotional, where ours was never like that. Very, very much so. Very much. We so. didn't. We didn't sit there and you know talk about our feelings or any of that stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't Beezer, do that either. But yeah, he, he, Beezer wants a link to the stream. He wants to come on. <laughs> Damn, he wants to represent. <laughs> wants to fight for it. <laughs> now I like big. I like big red Marines. Answer. Respect others. Firm handshake and keep your word. No, that's something Generation Z don't know. I got to honestly tell you guys, I can't think of one damn thing. Damn. But, I, but I bet you there is something. Oh, no, there oh, is. It's I, just I, being I, put on a the spot. of knowledge yeah, I, yeah, no, I have that's been given to me, but I, I can't. Uh, yeah, I really can't. It's weird. Will, William says, when the bad shows up, the mouth goes shut. Graybeard acquired knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and Nelson's best piece of advice. The right answer yesterday might not be the right answer today. Another good uh, quote right there. But uh, we're coming to the end right here. And uh, I think we had a very lively discussion. Absolutely. Uh, we found out that Mike's not liked by a lot of women. <laughs> nope. I've lost all of that type of audience whatsoever. It's done. Nice going, dummy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for spending your Sunday with us. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing a recap on that uh, Bandito stuff. And uh, don't forget uh, China Dow. She's over at the Viper Pit. And I'll let Danny and uh, Mike speak for themselves. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm allowing you, man. Oh, shit. Okay. I was allowing the platform. Hey, no. hey, I'm just Danny B. Low. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I'm Ball Valve TV, man, on all there platforms, but that's it. Rock on, man. We'll talk to everybody later. You guys, uh, it was a really good information. Uh, I'm going to be sleeping in the doghouse tonight, but it happened. Um, I usually find myself there all the time. We'll talk to you tomorrow. See you on the Madhouse tomorrow morning. Rock on, baby.